Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Malkin with me, Bring It On. I don't think we looked at the subpoena we got last time. So summons a sergeant at arms from the Congress of Moths as an ally. Doesn't say what its duration is, I assume the whole fight. Now we can check out this house. An abandoned looking house covered with ivy and moss stood on a little rise of dry land. It was improbably grand. A strange thing to find built at the edge of a swamp. Still, the road wasn't far. Perhaps it was once the well-appointed hunting lodge of a wealthy person, one of the nearby towns. Donald tried looking through the windows. He saw a lot of wreckage. It was hard to see anything else. Donald went inside. He didn't make it far. There were signs of disrepair in the house's facade, but inside was utter ruin. The ceiling had caved in, bringing the inside walls down with it. At first, Donald assumed the damage happened long after the place was abandoned. But no, it must have been abandoned because of the damage. The ceiling had come right down on a long wooden table, now split in two. And around it, amid the broken chairs, shattered cups, and other debris, lay bones. Getting a lot of Lore of Hauntings experience. The dead were still here. Donald could feel them. They were watching him from the debris, peeping at him through cracks, waiting. As familiar as he was with the attention of ghosts, he was glad he wouldn't have to visit the house, or even come near it at night. There was nothing else to see. He left the sad ruins behind. You can't journey the woods at night, either, because you're forced to go back to the Coven's Hut, or Cottage. At 7pm. I guess you can't leave till 7am. Alright, let's see which direction I'm going to go in. I think north. The day was drawing to a close. Eldest Lady and Middle One would be waiting. Donna went back to the house. He hoped the bed they prepared for him held fewer surprises than the forest paths. Ah, you must be a hungry witch. Well sit down. Middle One has made you some made some food for you. Donald complied. Middle One put down a loaf of hard black bread, some cheese, and a cup of tea. It had a piney taste, and Donald wondered if it was, in fact, made from pine needles. The bread seemed almost too hard to eat, but Donald was surprised to discover that it was savory, just a little sour, and very filling. It went well with the cheese. Donald broke the silence. I met a spirit in the woods. The witches looked intently at Donald. Does the name Malkin mean anything to you? Malkin was a witch, like you. Before Ned, there was Malkin, but in middle one. He was the third in your coven. Yes, you know the laws, always three. He was our third, before he left, and then Ned, and then you, if in fact you ever stopped pestering us with questions. He preferred independence to being coven bound, less power true but more freedom. What's become of him? He's alive, if that's what you mean. We haven't seen him for many seasons. We tend not to visit. He never does. Just so. Why didn't you mention him before? Why would we? Malkin didn't kill Nen. Of that you can be sure. Avenging our sister is what matters to us. 
He agreed to a coven breaking. He left, didn't he? Then one smiled kindly at Donald. Why did the Kami bring him up? The Kami have lived in these woods longer than we have. They know everything that happens here. The secrets of root and stone, tooth and claw. Our secrets too. They dislike us. They look on us the way an old king might look on an upstart lord. I suppose they've taken an interest in you because you mean to join us. Eldest Lady sniffed. My guess? They told you about him because they wanted to sow mistrust between you and us. The Malkin story has little to do with you. Nothing and everything. Just so. You wouldn't be here if Malkin hadn't left. But beyond that, he's unimportant. As for the Kami, they traffic in secrets. They'll try to win you over at trivial ones, and betray you and yours when it suits them. Don't let them. Can you tell me more about him? I'm curious. No. The subject doesn't appeal to me at all. Donald was unsatisfied, but didn't press Eldest Lady any further. According to Eldest Lady, Malkin had been part of the coven before Nen. It was unclear why the Kami brought him up. Perhaps another spirit be willing to tell the young witch more. I hope your colloquy with the Kami didn't distract you from your purpose. What of your little errand? I have no blood for you. I thought not. Tomorrow then. The day after. Don't let too many tomorrows creep by. Remember, you must have it on the 11th. Afterwards, Medawan showed the young witch to his bed. It was a hard, narrow thing with a thin blanket of wool on top of it. A wooden pillow. Okay. And a threadbare gray sheet. It sat beneath an open window that looked south into the woods. Uh, this will do. Thank you, middle one. He lay down and soon fell asleep. Not, meanwhile, changed back into a normal gourd. And Pharaoh perched on the windowsill all night, his head tucked into one wing. In the morning, middle one gave Donald a tin cup of chicory root tea and another chunk of the black bread they'd had for dinner. Be careful, said Eldest Lady, as Donald was leaving. There's treachery in the air. Don't breathe too deep. Donald noticed that she looked drained, even more haggard than usual. Fine, I won't use it there. Yeah, I just tried to use that. But a reminder, using your map will save time and help orient you. Use it to travel, you need to discover landmarks in the woods. With any luck, you found some already. You can also check it to see your current location. This works in most areas, but not all. As the start of a new day, you may want to use the map now. Like I said, I tried. I kind of go back to where we left off, but we could just continue south from where we're at and loop back around to it, right? So when I explore down here, so if I go south and stick to the west, eventually I'll hit this place and I can go east and re-explore that area, then go west here. Then I'll be eastern, third of the map explored. I think that's the right call. So I think this is where we went east before, so we'll go south. The stream that ran through this part of the woods made a ravine. The air was damper and cooler here, banks down to the creek were emerald with moss. A pig onion grew here. He collected some. 
what I do is when I see blue markers like that, is I'm going to use the arrow keys to approach it so I don't accidentally click through the dialogue. Because I keep forgetting to go back and look at the chat log after the fact. Alright, so let's check out East here. This is not new. We've been here before. Alright. I'm fairly certain. Like 95% sure. Donald heard more laughter and weird voices in the woods. The Congress of Moths was on his trail again. The Susher stood in the center of a clearing in the trees. Three elf cand candles surrounding him. Donald could see a throng of red caps and page and a page in the thicket. Alright, I'll show the moth is vulnerable to normal this time. Everything else is the same. a nice big hit. Okay, clear that guy out of the way so we can keep pushing forward. No! I didn't get the loot. I didn't think I was going to do 12 damage to the guy. Another portal closed. Donald caught his breath and went his way. Well, now I know I can't risk that. Another door. We don't have another key, do we? Poor Donald stood at door of dross. No key this time. Alright. In that case, we can probably fast travel to another location. Yeah, so there, point of interest, we'll need... A key. Um, some of these give us the name, like the Burrow Encampment, Plum Blossom Cave, Orchid Cave. Alright, try to make it to Plum Blossom Cave, I think, but we have to fast travel down here. Why is it blue again? Oh, no reason. Okay. that house. Uh, I think we're going to go straight north, right? 
that wear Plum Blossom Cave is located. Uh, close to maybe. We'll see. As good a direction as any. I'll definitely take some more resources. Quick save here. New landmark discovered. Plum Blossom Cave added to map. Fantastic. Their hair was drier and cooler than other places in the woods. Set to the side of a steep, rocky hillock was a cave. Strange to say, a thin layer of snow lay on the ground near its mouth. This thin, uh, strange to say. Donald couldn't believe it. Same twig in the middle of summer. One of its blood red branches was heavy with fruit. A coveted midwinter prize. Oh, cool. Adana knew of the lore of winter inside and out, and it included some legends about Sang, sang Twig. One said that if you carried a Sang Twig, switch goblins would never steal from you. Goblins aren't real, of course, so this result was guaranteed. <laughs> Another said that Sang Twig bled if it was the birthday of someone nearby. The plant wasn't bleeding, so it must not have been the young witch's birthday. Uh, still another said that Sang Twig crown sprinkled with a few drops of the wearer's blood warded off harm. He decided to test this one. The circlet was easy to fashion, and the blood easy to draw. An extra drop fell into the snow. The crown would serve. I got a Sang Twig crown. Does what? Plus one constitution and plus 10% cold resistance. Which we're going to a snow cave may come in handy. I don't know, I think this is still better for now. You're getting the plus one to will. I guess, no, that's plus two, it's a saving throw instead. And it's plus five to all elemental resistances. I'm going to swap to the other one for now, because it may just be cold damage in here. We'll do another quick save. The time doesn't progress in the caves either. Right, more white bonnet grew here. I collect that. Can I go this way? Fair enough. There was a tomb here. Statues of demons flanked a wooden casket, unadorned except for a piece of red silk draped on top of it. Part of the cave wall had been made smooth. That poem had been chiseled into it. Uh, Donald read it. Honeysuckle fades, the scent of plum in winter, sweet against harsh white. The young witch examined the stone demons. Their style was archaic, their expression imposing. The magic in the room felt familiar, but also faint and antique. It made the already forbidding cell even more sinister. I, what, I guess we'll turn back to the poem on the wall. He opened the casket. A skeleton lay inside. It wore ancient armor and slept beside a sword. A paper ribbon with the words, No Lord But Time, in calligraphy, was wrapped around the mouth. A hollow voice came from the skeleton in the casket, but the skeleton itself didn't stir. Wanderer, the sword is restless that drank its fill centuries ago, 
It clung to me like my own mortality. Take it. Alright. Maybe it's cursed. The young witch took the sword from the casket. It was a fine weapon. The stone demon sprang to life. I defeat all enemies. I have notifications turned off. I don't know why that popped up. I defeat all enemies. Stone demons are vulnerable to magic and take full damage from acid and fire. They're resistant to all other kinds of damage. Dang it. Nice. Whatever magic animated the stone demons began to dissipate. Enough remained to send them back to their posts in the four corners of the tomb. There they continue their vigil as ordinary statues for many years to come. The hollow voice spoke from the coffin again. And so a witch unsettles witchcraft ages old. Find my siblings, the other three ronin. Take their swords and meet us at the crossroads. There we'll let you hear the ancient story. The story told will have our rest. You will have a boon. The crossroads. Where's that? But the voice didn't respond. The young witch discovered a tomb belonging to a wandering warrior. A disembodied voice instructed the young witch to take the sword with which the ronin was entombed. A battle with the tomb's guardians ensued. After that, the disembodied voice said, Find my siblings, the other three ronin. Take their swords and meet us at the crossroads. They will let you hear the ancient story. The story told will have our rest, and you will have a boon. Okay. Straightforward enough. I'm guessing I'm guessing the other caves that we saw on the map are probably where their tombs are. The crossroads, though, I'm not so sure about. So we got a sword. Plumbop. The Plum Blossom Sword. Alright, so when equipped, the Plum Blossom Sword has these properties. It's two-handed melee weapon, Young Witch only, cold versus armor class, and buff. So plus 10% cold and magic resist, plus one attack bonus, one to six cold damage, plus strength bonus of up to three. 15% critical hit chance, which is the highest we've seen. Only does double damage versus triple, though. If the Plum Blossom Sword is used as a consumable, it gains the following properties before it is destroyed. Plus ke uh, 10 cold damage, uh, 10 magic damage must be adjacent to target. I don't know why I'd do that though. Alright, well let's equip it.
I still don't have a shield anymore, that's fine. Alright, the second day's adventures are well underway when another portal appeared. Steven stepped out, her sack slung over her shoulder. She waved. The young witch looked inside. Alright, so we need this key. She sells another one. And then we can sell a few things. But we probably don't need this shield. Or the bow. The quarter staff we can sell. And we have a better sword, so I don't know that I'd hold on to this either. Alright, so she has a few gloves to buy. The herbalist gloves. Plus one wisdom, minus 10% cold and fire resist, and plus 10% poison resist. The Enchanter's Gloves. Plus one intelligence, minus one to strength and constitution, and plus 10% magic resist. And Kid Gloves of the Panderer. Uh, plus one to charisma and intelligence, minus 10% to normal resistance and armor class. So the sword we have equipped gives us cold resist, so we only have uh, minus 10% fire resist. I'm not sure that we even have gloves equipped, do we? I may just take the consumables here. I really don't use these consumables either, but... We have 41, I may as well just... buying stuff. I think that's good enough for now. A statue stood by the path amid some brown grasses. It was covered with moss and badly worn. Donald examined it more closely. Farrah landed on the statue's shoulder and preened himself as Donald studied it. The figure had folded hands and a wolf's head. There was a graffiti scratch into the torso. The writing did not look nearly as old as the rest of the statue. The young witch read it. The scratches are merely directions. A north-southeast swamp, southeast road, west inn. Let's take a look at our map real quick and plan our course for the next episode. So we explored all this. We have a key. We can head back up this way if we want to. I'm assuming we could go north. We 
could also fast travel back here and head over this way. Burning daylight. It's already 2 p.m. None of it's worth even uh, going back this way for one location. Could have explored it the next day. Right, before Donald started door of dross, the young witch used the key of dross. Let's go knock it out. Donald came to the end of the ravine path. The banks across the water were nigh, sorry, high and impassable. Dense vegetation blocked the way south, and marshy, overgrown ground lay to the east. It was a lovely spot, with a small waterfall that leapt gladly into the dark recesses of the woods. The Congress of Moths was also drawn to the spot. Two portals formed, and two ushers stepped out of them. One smiled slightly. The first hint of emotion the young witch had seen from the stern beings. A host of warriors followed them. Donald braced himself. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, same stuff. Uh, the ushers of the moth rod are vulnerable to poison and magic. But one is false. One of the ushers is false. Uh, one is false and guards a false portal. Careful observation may reveal which one is the true usher. I'm guessing whichever one... ...absorbs the elf candles, right? Oh, they both do. Interesting. Alright, so I'm gonna go after her while she's standing on the puddle with the reduced armor class. I should have softened up the other guy instead. Jeez Louise, we're doing crazy damage right now. Alright, take it easy.
Put up four damage to that guy. I'm assuming he's the false one. Amethyst Staff. And Amber. Candy exploded everywhere. The usher has made a paper. Its portal was false. Candy received. Congress was gone. Shreds of the paper that had somehow embodied the false usher were all that remained of the fight. And Bishop Satchel. We also got an Amethyst Staff. Not can use it. It's a range 2. Uh, 1 to 4 normal damage plus strength bonus of up to 3. 50% critical hit chance. Only double damage. Has a base 60% chance of reducing targets movement by 1, fortitude modifies, and plus 2 spell points. Doesn't give him any defensive boosts like the other one does. But the plus 2 spell points is probably worth it. Plus one, all defenses. Two to four, normal damage. I don't know, I think the other one's still better. Plus it's a higher minimum damage. Alright, then real quick, we will travel to... Another location. We ate through some time fast traveling today, this day, the second day. And then we travel back to the Plum Blossom Cave and continue from there next time. In fact, Danger approaches, save your game. Alright, I'm gonna save it. And we're gonna call it here, because it might be another nasty fight like last time this happened. Plus, I'm completely lost track at the time. <laughs> I have no idea how long this episode's gonna be. But either way, for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.